Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with my sometimes friend, Matt Allen, from Virginia Auto Service. And we are here to help you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon, right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, it's all about you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. And all you got to do to get involved and we want to get to know you is give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. If you've got car questions, we've got answers. You can also stay in contact with us at 411-923. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, Fact or Fiction, open phones. And as Cooper said, when is it time to put old Bessie down? When is that car... No longer, it's time for a pine box. So, Dave, how do they keep in contact with us, with us at four one one nine two three? Is that a text that you oh, meant to say? Oh, yeah, text yeah. Text message. us at four one one nine two three. You can participate by text. Your sometimes friend, huh? His sometimes friend, exactly. Pretty, you know, and he's pretty friendly he, when you needed help with that car the other day. Matt's got a little bit of an evil side that no one knows about. He seems like a nice guy, but once in a while, he said <laughs> things, and I say, "Man, that's just not right." <laughs> Felt evil. Well, I didn't feel evil this morning. I was irritated. Sadistic side. A little bit of sadi- some of the things you say. You felt evil. Why this morning? Did I feel evil or feel irritated? Irritated. Well, I was getting gas. I was trying to get gas. You know, I was running around for the last three days with it saying miles till empty zero, <laughs> and mm. everywhere I was, I was in a hurry. So I always just put in, you know, three gallons real quick. So I didn't have time to sit there and fill up. But <laughs> so I'm at Costco this morning trying to get gas. This guy pulls up, and isn't the proper gas station etiquette to pull forward? Go up so you can get two people. Meanwhile, he leaves a blank in front of him. I just give him a friendly toot. And he's Friendly toot? You didn't lay on it? Because no, if you're that guy, I hate that no, guy. No, it's just like, dun, dun, you know, like, do, you know, do. Little, little toot toot, like you might hear in a car commercial. Did he move? Yeah, after a second round of tooting <laughs> and some hand gestures like forward your you number go. your number one no 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 it was no no conflict dave come on i'm not a conflict person it was just kind of like the rolling hand motion like come on come that's on. not irritating have you ever been waiting on a pump and someone you know someone pulls out and someone pulls right in front of you you've been sitting there for two minutes waiting for this guy to get out of the way i mean that is i mean that's morally bankrupt i mean why would you do that you know so Anyway, when is it time to put old Bessie down? I think if you've been car shopping lately, Bessie may stick around a lot longer than you want her to. Well, you know, I was shocked, Dave. And we're always, not always, if there's a point you're in our shop, okay, and we're looking at your car, and there, and at times we're, you're going to maybe blow up an engine or blow a head gasket or maybe just all these things that you've put off have caught up with you. And sometimes the common answer is, I'm just going to sell the car. Or the question is, people ask for advice. Do I fix this? If I don't fix it, what's going to happen? Or if I do, what's next? And I, gosh, I wish we had the crystal ball at, at times. But I about fell on the floor when I was reading this automotive news magazine about the pricing of cars. I mean, um, you have the great line, Dave. Why would you fix a three thousand dollar problem with a thirty thousand dollar car? You know, <laughs> right. take a three thousand dollar problem, make it a thirty thousand dollar. Well, one. the average price, average transaction price of a new car, second quarter two thousand thirteen, nearly thirty one thousand dollars, a five thousand dollar increase from two thousand and eight. Five thousand dollars in five years, that's twelve percent, I think is what that works out Something to. Something like that. But caused by what? Caused by federal government standards tightening fuel economy and, and, and squeezing what they want. There's certainly more bells and whistles. We got a lot of old cars on the road that we get you know, that the manufacturers want to get people out of. But here's what's interesting. The average price of the car payment oh. was four hundred and fifty seven dollars which is actually down a few percent from 2008. And the reason why is, man, we just spread that loan out further. What are we talking about? 65 months, 82 well, months? No, this one says the average term of a new car loan in second quarter 2013 is 65 months. But now they're stretching them with terms of 73 to 84 months accounted for twenty, nearly 20% of the new car loans. Whole, I mean, nothing wrong with owning the car eight years. Well, if you're going to paying for it for eight years, Good if you're going to own it eight years, eight years, you're talking about a negative or finance it eight years, negative equity situation, big time. So my point, 
you're in this car for the long haul. If you are going to let go of Bessie, you got to be taking care of it. There's no more skipping the recommendations because you've got to make this thing last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If you've got eight years of payments, you know that's eight, fifteen thousand miles a year. Help me with my math: eight hundred, whatever, twenty thousand miles, or more. And and then, unless you just want to sign up for payments again, you've got to make this car last. And and last week we talked about the cost of ownership and some of the the basic maintenance items and starting to budget for this repair. So not only in that four hundred and fifty-seven dollar repair, but you start getting into year two and three, you're gonna ha- you know you've got to start socking away maybe in year one and two or even two and three because once year f- four comes, <laughs> you know I thought you were gonna throw up. <laughs> no, I was just choking. <laughs> uh, it, you know, in some cases that's just tough, and that's the thirty thousand dollar car. And dude, I'm telling you, thirty thousand dollars where my notes go. Uh, Impala, two thousand fourteen Impala, thirty thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, Impala is not my favorite car, but nothing real special about it necessarily. No, it's not, no. uh, you know. And even people uh, get an SUV or get a Hyundai; they're cheaper, thirty grand. Well, here's so, what's happened. I mean, the manufacturers have been able to lift the prices. I mean, the prices have gone up. That's the other the dirty payments, little secret. The payments have gone out longer. The interest has been down, so we've been able to keep that car payment right there because we know that in the last five years, wages have not gone up. If anything, they're down five hundredths of a percent. You know, so, you know, how can the price of cars go up? Well, we've what? financed them longer. We've held on to the debt longer. And the, the, the problem with that is, I mean, I mean, for the auto manufacturers, if interest rates go up, you know, cars are going to jump well, up by 100 bucks a month. That's the dirty little secret. This is not a, a repair industry magazine. This is a, a dealership-type magazine. And what they've done, the manufacturers have taken advantage of the low interest rates. And because of the low mm. rates, it's easier for people to buy car. Payments are down. So they've crept the price up. So they're just adding to their bottom line. And this article talks about their fear now if interest rates go up. There's two things happening here. If interest rates go up, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot because they jacked those prices to pad the margin, mm. and now people won't be able to finance them. And they're concerned about getting people into loans for 65 to 84 months. If you don't think they want to sell you a new car every five years, you're crazy because these they're very concerned about the life cycle, and people won't be ready to purchase again because the loans have stretched out. Well, if we talk about... The cars that I like to talk about, the five-year-old car, the 10-year-old car, what if you're out there and you're facing a repair on your car? Maybe it's a $1,000 repair or maybe it's $2,000 worth of $1,000 worth of maintenance plus $1,000 worth of repair, and you're saying, hey, should I just go be buying a new car? And, you know, we have a repair or replace calculator because for me it's all about cost per mile. How much does it cost me to drive this car? And if you're driving a new car for the first five years, I mean, when it's like $2.50 a mile, I mean, is that really that sexy? You know, can we keep a car for for longer? So do we take a $500 repair, a $1,000 repair, and just say, hey, it's time to go get a new car? Well, at some point, it's no. That that's. I mean, Bessie's still got life in her, man. She at, may walk at, a little at slow. At some and, point, with some of the technology, maybe you want the Bluetooth, maybe you want the bells and whistles, or maybe you don't care about that. Let's just say you have a four thousand five hundred dollar repair that you need. You 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 didn't take care of your car. Maybe you did. Maybe you know we we tend to think people aren't taking care of things when they have a problem. Let's just say the hose blows. Something happens. You get a rock in the radiator and it blows up and. And uh, you don't realize you have a leak, and you cook the engine. It wouldn't be unreasonable to put a, a to spend five thousand dollars putting an engine in a car. And I picked that forty five hundred number because that's ten car payments. So if you have a car that's decent, it's got good tires on it, and you like it, and you've taken care of it for the most part, and if something really bad goes wrong, goes haywire, and you've got to spend a big chunk of change, that's ten months, and you're free again. You're not hot, held hostage by eighty four months or. 65 months worth of payments again. You're free and clear again. Well, I mean, if you certainly can afford it and money's no issue and you like the smell of a new car, go for it. Go out and buy a new one. But the reality is that I call it the Dave Ramsey math is, you know what, you're just going to put yourself on that debt hook for even longer. I'd rather have money in my back pocket and sleep well at night. That's the thing that I'm going for. So, And then when I have somebody considering that that big repair, maybe they're not going to go out and buy a $30,000 new car, but they say, I'm just going to get a good used one. Yeah, right. Right? Well, I tell you what, you get a good used one right here. We'll just rebuy this car for $4,000. Well, that's my, the best used car to buy is your own. 
Yeah. And, and I think we, you know, done the math on this several times before. I mean, in this case, we're talking a six or seven thousand dollar car, or whatever. If it's blown up, it's not worth anything. Zero. You fix it. You take that five grand you were going to fix it with, the thousand you could have sold it for. If you're going to take that same pool of money and buy a six thousand dollar car, you're better off with your own. When we come back, we've got a board full of open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. We can talk about anything you want to talk about related to your car, or if you're considering a repair, you can also text us at 411-923. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to help you, the automotive repair consumer or car consumer, make good choices when it comes to your car. If you need any help, give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You can also text us at 411-923. And... uh, Gas station etiquette. I'm going to pick on the handicap <laughs> etiquette. That's a topic of mine. You know, are you one of those people that uses the handicap parking because you happen to be in your grandmother's car and it's there? Do you take it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, me? Yeah. My grandmother doesn't have a car. She doesn't have a placard? No. No, no but... Uh, you know when you go... I thought my... Re- no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tempting. Tempting. Sometimes, but nah. It's not. You know what would keep me? My kids would tell on me. <laughs> they right. would. They pick up all that stuff. You know <laughs> what do you? I sometimes I don't put my seatbelt on until I get going, or you know I just. And boy, do I get hounded from the back seat, Papa, Papa, seatbelt, <laughs> seatbelt. See, yeah, yeah, I'll get it. Uh, seatbelt. Our know. kids, man, they do call us out. And so I'm like, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Get yours on. <laughs> Shush back there. Oh, that's a hypocrite statement. What are you yeah. saying? So Sorry. we've got Chris, John, and Tony in a couple open lines at 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Chris in Tempe on a 2000 Nissan Xterra. Go ahead, Chris. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, thanks for taking my call. Um, I had my air conditioner go out on me this week, and I took it to the dealership. They told me that the high-pressure and low-pressure hoses were leaking, and to replace them. And as I've called around to a a few different shops, some of them have these ones where they rebuild the hoses. And other places are like, no, we wouldn't do, we wouldn't give you those. We have to give you the OE on that. What's your take on these rebuild hoses? Um, You know, sometimes they're just fine. It's a, it's a matter of uh, preference. Maybe the shop, um, you know, has a relationship that somebody with somebody that can make those hoses Dave, we know a guy. We have a friend, Art Nolte. He he fixes tons of AC hoses, oh. and he does them for the dealers too. They're a, and they're so, a, they're a great hose, and I'd be more than comfortable using them. It, but sometimes it's just a matter of turnaround time. I mean, if we can order the hose, and I don't know what the sometimes the price difference can be substantial because at the end of the day, that hose is connected. Rubber hose has t- two aluminum ends on it, and you're going to cut off some some crimps and put a new piece of hose on there, and then we can. Uh, uh, crimp them with you know have a crimping machine that's special for that. It's not just a piece of garden hose or anything in there, and that's a good repair. It may not always look as good, but there's a cost element to doing that too. There, the, it it would cost less, but then we have the car taken apart longer, and it doesn't necessarily maybe help with production. Well, sometimes hoses just aren't available anymore. Well, that too. So then you find yourself going ahead and and we do it with power steering hoses at times, air conditioning hoses. Um, you know, that that would be about the only applications you do that with. And especially, like you said, David, something's not available. When they had these bankruptcies and all the, mm. the problems years ago or a few years ago, you put out the little mom-and-pop shop that was a supplier for Ford. Maybe they got the contract to make the hoses for, you know, whatever car for whatever period of time. And then they went bankrupt, and they didn't pay their bill to old mom-and-pop. Or if you happen to no drive a hose. Saab, you're going to be building that hose. You're not buying it from yeah. Saab. So. Yeah. Thanks so much for the call, Chris. We are going to go with, it looks like uh, Karen dropped out, so Tony in Glendale on a 1997 Ford Escort. Go ahead, Tony. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, thank you for taking my call. I've been trying for the longest to find a car for my daughter, and I actually drove behind someone and stopped on a 97 Ford Escort. 
uh, length, uh, 114,000 miles, and um, just want your professional opinion. I like what you said just before going to break about the wisdom of not spending a bunch of money on a long jet, long car a long time on a car versus buying a used car or making a used car work best for you. So my question is, the problem that I observed on it was uh, AC. Well, they told me I'll write AC and uh, looking to sell it. What is your uh, thought on buying used cars? I know the prices of them have gone very high. Well, first and foremost, if you ever are going to buy a used car, my advice is to go get the car checked out. Go to an independent shop and have them look at the car. You're in Glendale, Dave's Car Care, 51st Avenue in Peoria. You're going to buy a car on a Saturday. That's the place to go. And you want to ask for a pre-purchase inspection. You might spend $50 to $100 doing that, depending on the shop you're in. And have them, when we do it at my shop, we're, we are digging these cars apart. We're looking. We want to find everything wrong with it to keep you from buying it, starting a bad relationship, you know? And the 97 Escort, that's pretty low. Yeah, that's low mileage. Super low. That might have been one of the Sun City Sweethearts, or it might have been one where the Dominator got rolled back. If it's rolling around with a dollar sign written in the window with shoe polish, it may, <laughs> you know, it may not be the right one. But you've got to get the car checked out. And, and depending on what the budget, I tell people at the shop, too. They're going to, oh, I'm going to go buy a new car. What's your budget? 5000 Good. Go buy a $4,000 car. Go find one. But don't buy it until somebody inspects it. Have somebody inspect it. And you, you're going to have to put some money into it when you first buy it just to get it caught up because the guy that's selling it, he didn't go necessarily fix everything on it. Now, some people do. But uh, to the point earlier, when I have somebody with a broken car and they're looking at a $2,500 repair, they say, well, I'll just go buy a good used car. And then I have to tell them, you know, half the cars that we look at, someone just bought and now they're spending $2,500 with me. So that's what we want to try and avoid is that big repair that we didn't see coming. And used cars prices have dropped a little bit in the last couple months. It's a little softer market right now. My other thing is whether you're buying a new car or a used car, go drive it. Drive it. If you've got three kids, take the three kids with your car shop and load them up and go for a ride. See how everybody fits. Does the car seat fit right? Don't find out it doesn't have this thing that you want or it makes your back hurt after driving for 20 minutes. This is a big deal to Matt because he's been Mr. Mom now for like two weeks. Because his uh, <laughs> No, actually two for weeks, like a month months. and a half because his uh, mother-in-law who helps out with his five Bambinos that run around. <laughs> you know, So he's been playing bus driver. I, I call his work. Is Matt in that? No, he's taking the kids to school. You, you, know? you said Bambinos. You're trying to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, but no, when we bought my wife's new car several years ago, the car, you know, you put the car seat in. Now it's too narrow. You can't. An adult can't sit in the back seat. It's all crammed in. Maybe we would have done something different if we were thinking. I got all, you know, I got all worked out. Look at this. It's got that. Oh, it's a pretty cool it's a nice and, car. Yeah, but throw a car seat in. It's not so nice. <laughs> well, if you're looking at a big, expensive repair, and when you bought it, it was just you and your wife, and it's a convertible, and now you have three kids. You know, maybe it is time. So that's a good question to ask you. Does it really still fit your needs or did it fit my needs five years ago? Times have changed. Maybe that's something you want to look at, you know. How well have you maintained the car? If you know you've totally neglected this car and the thing is just a jalopy, yeah, maybe it's not worth spending $2,500. Well, the other thing, too, when you have the car checked out, don't just let the mechanic say, oh, yeah, it all looks good. What's all of it? What did you look at? And, and, And then maybe ask the question, what do you foresee in maintenance or breakdown possibilities in the next year so you can be prepared? Well, we got Steve, John, and Sean, and one I can't pronounce. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio on this first kind of chilly day of October. And uh, we are here, as always, every Saturday to help you with your car at 11. He's Dave Riccio from Tri-City Transmission. I'm Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Service. And we are talking about replacing cars, buying used cars, the price, the god-awful high prices of used our new cars, and why it may be worth uh, not uh, digging that hole for that uh, old faithful yet. Keeping old Bessie. And uh, we've got a silent guy in studio today. We've got Jimmy, who uh, spent a lot of years working the dealership, and he made a good point in... Uh, he said, man, cars don't last just 100,000 miles anymore. They last 200,000 miles easy. 
A little bit of maintenance, you can make a car go a long ways. We did a show on nine ways to make your car go 200,000 miles. Your expectation has to change. We don't just throw it away because it's got 100,000 miles on it anymore. I mean, there cars used to be worn out at 70 sometimes. Well, you don't have to even change the oil to 100,000 miles. You don't? Well, that's what they say. No. <laughs> a little facetious there. But uh, if you take care of them, there's no reason. 100,000 is like the uh, 50,000 of old. I mean, you just... No big deal. Do the maintenance. Don't get hung up in the marketing department's version of uh, of how things work. And uh, there's no reason these cars can't make a, a buck fifty, two hundred thousand 200,000 miles. We don't have a lot of time for you, but you got some sort of special going over there, Virginia Auto Service? Uh, we do. Uh, myself, Virginia Auto Service downtown in Lee Weatherby at Accurate Automotive in Mesa are amongst a group of people nationwide who are doing a promotion, Breaks for Breasts. For the month of October. And in our shops, you can come in and get free brake pads. You're not going to get a free brake job. You come in, and the brake pad portion of your brake job is absolutely free. We've worked with a vendor. They're going to provide those. And they're not they're not providing the you know the 99 cent brake pads that you get at some shops. There is it's whatever brake pad we deem necessary that we would normally put on your car to do a quality job. And then on top of that, you get the free brake pads. We're going to donate 10% of the labor portion or any ancillary parts that you need to properly do your brake job. It's going to the Cleveland Clinic's Breast Cancer Research. It's a nationwide deal. It's pretty pretty cool. Well, it sounds like a good deal. You can find both Virginia Auto Service and Accurate Automotive and a lot of other great shops at BumperToBumperRadio.com. We are going to go with John. Looks like he's in Minnesota on a 2000 S10 Blazer. Go ahead, John. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning, guys. Quit complaining about the weather. It's 49 degrees, cold, windy, and rainy here. So. I was going to say, it's not so chilly here, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't wait to get back there. Um, this thing, periodically, it's got a V6, about 180,000 miles on it. Periodically, it idles high, and then periodically, when you stop at a stop sign, it'll die from idling too low. Okay. Barely... Pro- could be a fairly simple item on on that car. Is it here in Phoenix or is it up no, there in Minnesota? No, it's up here. Okay. Well, that car is going to have what's called a, a, a idle control motor or IAC, and, and all that is, it's a bypass. It's an air bypass. It's a controlled air leak or vacuum leak around the throttle body. When you're stepping on the throttle, you're going to open that butterfly up and allow air into the engine. So to achieve the right idle. The computer is constantly working and adjusting. It's opening and closing the stepper motor that's just changing the size of the orifice that's allowing air to get in. And that air is dirty. It's recirculated crankcase ventilation air, PCV air, air that's coming into the engine through the air filter isn't always clean. And that that idle air control motor can get carboned up and dirty. That would be one of the first things I would be looking at, especially if it's erratic. If it was just low... Depending on the type of system on the car, I might be looking at a vacuum leak. In some cases, a vacuum leak will make a car idle very high, though, depending if it's got a MAP sensor or if it's using a mass airflow sensor, what 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 the uh, strategy is. So I'd be looking at an idle control motor uh, being carboned up or if it's not getting the proper information from the computer telling it to open, telling it to close, and, and making that adjustment. But it might be it might be worn out. Or it could simply just be dirty. That would be the, the first step if it were but in my shop. Certainly not a reason to put old Bessie down. No. It's, what's that? What do you say? 180,000 miles or I think something? He said 160. Yeah. But most of these phone calls we get are 150, 160. I mean, it, it happens all the time. There's no reason a car's not good for at least 200,000 miles and sometimes 300,000 miles. Now, in Minnesota, it might have this. A little bit uh, of rust. <laughs> yeah, it might be I'm so thankful apart, we don't but... have to work on rusty cars in this town. We get one from out of state, we're like, we're working on that here. Well, you Don't know, I used so. to, ironically <laughs> enough, I used to live in Virginia, and it was not co- uncommon to have the torches out when you're working. I mean, you were lighting them up every day to to heat up rusted nuts and bolts. And I've got a guy from Ohio at my shop, and and he, you know, we see a car with rust, or what, some of my techs that have, are Arizona natives, they go, "Oh my God, look at the rust in this thing! It's got some surface rust where the sprinklers went on the rotor or something." They don't quite know how to handle it. It's interesting. 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTR. Thanks for the call, John. We're going to go with Steve in Glendale. Looks like on a 2000 Chevrolet Silverado. Go ahead, Steve. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, good morning. Thank you. Uh, yeah, on my truck, I got a uh, leather interior, and the driver's seat is all ripped 
all ripped up, all torn apart. Is there somebody you would recommend to uh, reupholster that, redo it? I've I've got a guy that we use in our shop, and I don't know his name or number off the top of my head. If you go to bumper to bumperradio dot com, go to the contact link and send us an email. I'll get you hooked up with somebody. But there's there's guys that are used car reconditioners and such, and they they can fix those no problem. They put an insert in that in that. Uh, I know right where you're talking about, right in this side edge of the seat where you're getting in and out of it all mm-hmm. the time. We can fix those up. They'll just stitch in a new piece of leather, or, or sometimes they can patch them. But if it's pretty far gone, though, they'll, they'll put a new piece of leather, and they can typically do that right in the car. All so, kinds of all they kind fix of, them up great. The the dash, you know, might bubble, or you get some torn thing, or we've you know, unfortunately, sat in a car with a screwdriver or something in the pocket, or you get the <laughs> armrest is all worn out. These guys can work miracles with stuff. For sure. Thanks so much for the call, Steve. We're going to go in with Tom in Gilbert on a 2006 Nissan Armada. Go ahead, Tom. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, yeah, on my uh, 06 Armada, I've got um, every once in a while you lose brake pressure and you get your brake light that turns on. It throws a, a coat out. Um, I've talked to the dealers and I've looked up on a, on a few you know, blogs and whatnot. It seems to be a, a common problem. Um, across the board for the Armada and the brake system. I've had recommendations, you know, it's you need you need a new booster, you need, you know, you need this, you need your EDC program, reprogram, that kind of thing. But uh, the more I read on it, it seems like there's not really a fix, and I wanted to get your opinion on that. When you say you lose brake pressure, what do you what do you mean by that? And then what's um, the what's the code that you got? The information when you hit the brake, it just goes to the floor, and you feel like your uh, ABS is kicking on. Um, you get that little pump in the pedal, and there's no, there's like minimal, uh, about 20% brake pressure. You turn the vehicle off, you turn it back on, you're good to go again for another month or two until it happens again. Well, what what happens when you're, I mean, you step on that, and after your slight heart attack, if you're coming and you've only got 20% brake, and you're not shutting the car off, and then while you're stopping, how do you get the car to stop? You just, I mean, praying and holding on and stepping on the brake harder, <laughs> or, or how do you? Fortunately, fortunately it's always been. Um, Nothing real high mileage or whatnot. No, okay, and no, unfortunately, I, I've got to the point where you know sometimes the brake light will kick on and you know it's coming, and so I'm just trying to figure out what the actual fix for it is. Well, I've seen it. It seems to be a common problem. Everybody I talked to with an Armada, you know, same year or older, and as at least ran into it two or three times. Uh, and there's a lot of people that replaced the first two, done what Nissan has recommended, and said it fixed the problem. I'm just wondering what your opinion is. Well, I, I guess the first thing I would do is, well, I mean, for, you can go online. You can find anything about your car that you want to be wrong with it, and there'll be somebody talking about it. Mm. So, uh, Google Gnostics? Yeah. Well, Google Gnostics. Yeah, that, was mean, a, that was a word that uh, Jim Pat did. But it, it, if, if, you, um, if there's a program update that's available, that's start, the first place you're going to start. start. Mm. I, I hate to get in the situation of, you know, you you go to the shop or you go to the dealer and they say a brake booster is going to fix it. Well, is that going to fix it or not? And are you going to what are you going to do? Is this a guess or a fix or any of that kind of a thing? There's got to be logic for what we're going to do when we fix the car. So if there's a program available, we'll do the program. That may or may not fix it. The other thing that you said was you cycle the key and you wait until it happens again in a month. That might be very difficult to find. Mm. But what I can say, cycling the key will do absolutely nothing to the brake booster. The brake booster is a mechanical issue, so I would tend to believe that that's not it. Mm-hmm. Be looking at, at a controller. The the uh, We've had a couple Ford products where it makes you think the master cylinder is bad, but in reality, it's the analog brake system controller. Those valves are sticking or hanging open, or there's a piece of debris in there. So when you go to apply pressure, it's just bypassing as if the ABS were engaging. So you could have a problem with, with a controller. Well, Tom, you're in Gilbert. If you don't have a shop that you regularly work with, we've got Desert Car Care out there. 
They're they're good guys. The other one I think of uh, Nissan specialist is Joel at Arizona Imports. You know, I'm waiting for him to text me the answer because it sounds like a pattern <laughs> failure. You're describing something that regularly happens. So uh, waiting for him to text me the answer, and if he does, uh, stay tuned. Stay Joel is always a hot on the yeah. hot on the iPhone, laying down the answers. And then uh, also you can send us an email at bumper to bumper radio dot com on the contact link, and then uh, we'll respond to you. We find some more information for you uh, that you may not have just via. Google. So thanks so much for the call, Tom. And that uh, puts us up for uh, a little bit of, let's see if I can get this right. It's time for Fact or Fiction. We had a text on this. We had somebody with a 2006, uh, I think a V8 uh, Toyota 4Runner, and their text was, how often do I service my transmission? Before the show, I got a text from a friend that said, you know, I've got this 2000 and... uh, I think it's a 2012, 2013 Toyota Tacoma, and I've been told that it's a sealed unit and there's no service necessary. And this... It was a 2011, so, yeah. Yeah, so the fact or fiction, I guess I biffed that, but it, do I service my transmission? Is it sealed, and does that need to happen? Fact or fiction? Um, Dave, you didn't present it in a fact or fiction uh, I totally format, screwed up. so I'll just answer the question. The transmission, of course, it's sealed because it's not just leaking, but it's not sealed up in welded clothes like you can't drain it. It may not be uh, – it may be sealed to the guy at the drive through lube shop that uh, – you know, is on the corner, but it's not sealed for the professional technician that has the the right. Maybe the car doesn't come with a dipstick. You know, there's no way to easily get there for for a hairy homeowner in the garage. But for trained technicians, yes, you can get into it, and yes, you do need to service the you, transmission. You do need to service. I responded. He said, "How often do I do it?" And I said, "Every." 30,000 miles. Well, speaking of transmissions, I mean, transmission, I would say, is maybe the number one question. If not, it's it's definitely fighting for a spot on the podium there, whether you need to service them, how you fix them, whatever. And what is it? Saturday, October 26th, 26th. we will be broadcasting live from Tri-City Transmission in Tempe, Dave, you're feeding everybody. You got some food trucks going out We got the uh, grilled cheese food truck coming out. I've got all the transmission technicians on site to just answer questions, free advice. And then we've got transmissions that are taken apart on display that people can look at so you can see what the heck is in the middle of this thing and what's all this talk about service, don't service. So, But not just transmissions, though. You're going to have cars up on the rack so we can see the importance of mounts and axles and rear differentials. And It's not some greasy gearhead shop. It'll be a good thing to come out and probably well, something for kids. We'll have do. a lot of shop owners from uh, Bumper to Bumper Radio that'll be joining us as and well. who doesn't like grilled cheese? Oh, it's great. So we've got James and Daryl and open lines at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to to help you with your car, talking today a little bit about when is it time to put old Bessie down. And we've got a text, uh, 90, well, it's a text from uh, 602, no, it's a 95 <laughs> Geo Prism, 187,000 miles, and she's got a list of stuff, she or he, of stuff that's wrong with the car. Uh, tires, struts, strut plates, valve problems. Oil leak. I mean, it, the list goes on and on, and, you know, this one may be a situation where it is time to put Bessie down, but a 95 Geo Prism is a Toyota Corolla, essentially, I mean, which is a good car, so, but this is where you got to have the conversation. If you are going to keep the car, you know, are you going to are you gonna deal with Bessie's hip problem, or are you just going to leave that alone? Well, Dave, what it says here, and I don't know if this is a he or a she or whatever, but it's got all this list. We want to know what the repair replace calculator says. And and we'd have to ask more information to put in there. But the other thing it says, I have to do this, you know, piecemeal at a time because of income. So we're probably not going out and buying a new car. Um, maybe we're not going to go buy a very expensive used car either because we're going to end up with what we have right now. So the thing that Dave and I always preach is there is nothing wrong with getting this list. You want to be informed, just like going to the doctor. Or, or dentist, whatever. Are you going for a cleaning? If you've got a hole or a cavity in your tooth, you certainly want to know about it. You've got to communicate. Doesn't mean you got to fix it all, though. Right. You've got to communicate with the with the service advisor. Maybe you ask them, show me. How bad is that oil leak? 
do I really need to fix that? It sounds like you need to take care of the things that are going to make your car break down or have the potential to leave you on the side of the road or safety. And that's where I'm going to start at my shop. Tires, possibly. Uh, struts are not going to make the car break down. No. I it, mean, they it, could be really bad where the thing's just horrible. If they're but... really bad and they're unsafe and you're going to get a wreck and a panic stop, we got to do something about them. But, but sometimes struts are just one of those, uh, you know, they're one of those comfort items that you can actually skip out Speedometer on. Speedometer needs calibration. Nah, it's not going to break you down. I mean, you can probably judge how fast you need to be going off of everybody else. Hoses, maybe the thermostat's bad. Well, wintertime, you may not have any heat, so we might be talking about that. So the, go have a conversation and get in the comfort zone and have them lay it all out with estimates, break it up, prioritize it, and that's how the approach should be to fixing that. Well, I'm going to take a couple more here, uh, then we'll go to back to phone calls, but an 03 G35 coupe, squeaking noise under the dash, sounds like mad, ravenous chipmunks, ideas where to look. Sounds like a blower motor going bad to me. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, maybe something. Well, as I say, something I've had car before in my excursion. You know, suck up a napkin off the floor and it goes in the in the uh, motor. But you're not going to get that with a with a car that's got a cabin air filter. So for sure. Hey, and uh, Joel finally came through. He said, "Top notch upholstery." Uh, they're out in Mesa for the gentleman calling on upholstery, but this guy was out in, uh, sounds like Glendale, so still shoot us an email, but top-notch upholstery is a good one. Another guy said, oh, 04 Titan, same problem as the Armada. It was a brake booster, and then Joel said brake booster. So thank you, Joel, from Arizona Imports. You might look there. I think his name was John. You know what's funny, Dave? Now, there's two people that said brake booster, and here I am saying, I'm not thinking of brake booster because you've got to cycle the key. And, uh, you know, we laughed about this the other day when you were gone. Uh, Rob was filling in. <laughs> and we were talking. A guy called. And, and I said, well, it sounds like maybe a, a throwout bearing because of the way, uh, you know, because of the way if you can influence the noise by stepping on the pedal. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out the guy came in your shop and it has a bad motor mount. Yeah, but Dave it, with the 06 Mazda Speed 6. And he goes, well, Matt said. He said it was going to be the throwout bearing. I said, well, was was I there that day? And he said, no, Rob was in. I said, well, Matt doesn't know. Well, but, but it's just funny. I mean, we, we are obviously here to do the best we can do to help you entertain you just a little bit. Yeah. and uh, We're just not that entertaining. <laughs> get you pointed in the right direction on your repair. So don't take everything that we say as if it's going to be the repair. We get a lot of emails from mechanics that listen. Are you dumb. You know. No one says anything like that. <laughs> but then we do get some armchair quarterback in. Well, we're going to go with, looks like James. I'm sorry. No, we're going to go with Daryl and Gilbert on a 2004 Grand Cherokee. Go ahead, Daryl. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Uh, good to talk to you today. Um, I'm a, a Jeep Cherokee. And I my thing is that I want to do a, uh, I want to clean the intake valve. So I understand that you can take the, uh, they can put sea foam and suck it through the vacuum line. Uh, my issue is that you need to make sure that the vacuum line actually draws into all all the cylinders as opposed to just one single cylinder. And how's the best way to find that information out? Where do you guys know? Well, you you can do that. That's a good service. The sea foam is good and in, in to do that. But you've got to just try and find either a central port something is, that a, is it a 4 liter or a uh, 4 liter or f- v8 i don't know i put him back on hold daryl what is that a 4 cell or a 4 liter or a v8 engine yeah, 4.0 inline six. Right. Yeah, there's there's a main port right off the manifold right there well, where the brake boosters come. Yeah, out. but that problem is, Dave, on that brake booster, it if it's not centrally located, for example, if that's just over like say the number four and five cylinder part of the intake manifold, you're gonna suck that in there and it's gonna clean number four and five. They will be great, but you know, the one, two, three, and six are or are, mm. are dirty. So you've really got to find a central location to to fog that in. The other thing that you can do, you've got to be careful. You hook that thing up to the brake booster line. You just <laughs> suck in 16 ounces. You could hydrolock that engine. So you've got <laughs> to be really careful. Don't just <laughs> inhale that whole thing. Uh, you know, GM carbureted cars, we used to use the top engine cleaner. And you run the engine. You've got your hand on the throttle. And you just start pouring it down the throttle blade a little bit. And that thing's going to start smoking. I mean, it will definitely take care of the mosquitoes in the neighborhood. Make sure you close your windows at home and and start feeding that, that sea foam into the throttle body. And you can keep revving the engine. Then I would just kind of pour it, and then it, as it stalls, and then just let it sit. Let that thing sit for a half hour. 
with all that that stuff in the intake manifold on the valves maybe crank it over by hand to make sure you didn't get too much in there and once you've turned the engine a revolution or two fire that bad boy up it may have a hard time starting <laughs> and uh just blow it out finish dumping the rest of the stuff in well there. i know if i'm ever driving down 7th street and i'm somewhere near virginia and i see smoke coming out of there yeah, that's what you guys are doing down oh there. good so, lord I mean, carbon is such a problem on newer direct injection vehicles carbon is just you know you know a lot of people say oh you don't have to do these carbon services you no. know that's just not true anymore well, and there's a difference between the $89 carbon service that the guy is trying to sell you at the car wash that go donate your money to breast cancer awareness instead of getting that. You've got to spend the money and get it done right. I mean, there's some of them are, you got a Volkswagen, you're breaking the stuff out of there with a chisel or walnut blasting. So there's a process. Thanks for joining us. If you're looking for a good shop, bumper to bumper Thanks, Peter, for running the dials. Remember never to text in drive and don't forget about October 26th. Matt and I will be on location at Tri-City Transmission. Bumper to Bumper Radio and Tri-City are feeding you lunch. We're talking about transmissions, which is my absolute favorite topic. I don't know why. So glad you could join us. We'll see you next week.